This is a really weird weather pattern, and we've got this sneaky cold air that's trying to work into parts of the Northeast. We're going to look at that in the video today, and look at this bowling ball of cold air moving into California. This is bringing some heavy snow. We're going to look at that, too. And we're also going to talk about this monster ridge that's just setting across the southern plains and the southern U.S., keeping things way above average. And as long as this is in place, expect warm temperatures. Some colder air moving into the Rockies as we head into now, what, Wednesday and Thursday. So some snow up here into the northern Rockies. The real cold air still lurking up to the north across Alaska. A piece of that, look at this, tries to break off as we head into Friday and Saturday. This may make things interesting for the northern plains and to parts of the Great Lakes. And this may actually bring some significantly cooler air, not just to the Great Lakes, but maybe as far south as the southern Appalachians. Something that I'm going to watch as we head through the week. And another thing that starts to happen once we get toward the end of the month, this cold air over into Siberia, looks like it's still going to move into Alaska, temperature dropping below average. Now look at your trough outs digging in. I think you watch the West Coast for things to really start to get active. And I think there's multiple chances for snow, not just along the Pacific Northwest Coast, but also into the Rockies in the coming days and weeks. A sneaky shot of cool air. I'm going to show you in just a minute, but this is a really wild setup here into the Northeast as some backdoor cold front action kicks in as we head into Thursday and Friday. And then that lifts out. And then again, we tap into some more cold air as we head into Saturday and Sunday, feeling more like fall versus summer for a few of you, although parts of the Southern Plains not cooling off much. Here are the big features. There's that upper low moving into California, low pressure moving away from the East Coast, and we've got showers racing toward the Great Lakes. Some light rain. It'll start to fall apart as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. A big storm moving into the Gulf of Alaska. That's going to bring a lot of wind, a lot of rain, and a lot of snow here into the mountains as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. Cold into the long north slope. A lot of snow here also moving into the Northwest Territories as we keep a lot of low pressure around this region. So multiple chances for rain and snow showers over the coming days through the weekend. Across the east, cold front starts to work off to the east. Low pressure moving towards the Hudson Bay and there comes some cold air around that with temperatures on the way down, feeling like fall and then another system moving into the west. This one could be pretty impressive next week. Still early, but Maybe another snowstorm for the Rockies, and the snow levels may be quite a bit lower than what we're dealing with now. This is really impressive, too, with what's happening here into the Sierra Nevada. Snow levels anywhere from 5,500 feet, really once you get above 6,500 feet to 7,000 feet, that's where you're going to see several feet of snow, especially above 7,500 feet. There could be a couple of feet of snow by the time it's all said and done. This system weakens some as it moves towards the Wasatch into parts of Utah, uh, also Wyoming. Idaho, Montana, but still some snow showers will be around and then things settle down some here as we head through the week. A quick look at the snow, heaviest into the mountains. We're also going to see that snow push off to the east into the Wasatch, into parts of Wyoming, western Montana, some heavy snow into the higher elevations. Either way, colder temperatures too across this part of the country. Waking up Tuesday, well below freezing in many of these areas. High temperatures, pretty cold, especially up here in Alberta. We're in the 30s and 40s. You get south down here into the deep south, uh, into Texas, we're into the 80s and 90s. But, you know, even across the southwest with a lot of clouds and rain, temperatures held back quite a bit. And that rain could be a big problem uh, across the southwest, too, over the next couple of days. I want to take a quick look at the future radar here because we've had showers through Monday. More on the way heading into Tuesday. That rain could be heavy at times, especially as this piece of energy kicks into Southern California. Once we get into the afternoon and evening hours, that starts to move ashore, and then we push the rain further to the east. The southerly flow continues across the southwest. Rain chances increasing now across parts of Utah. Colder air aloft changes that rain to snow, and I think you got to watch out for some heavy rain and snow here. Also into parts of Colorado in the short term as well through early Tuesday morning into Tuesday afternoon. Some of that starts to settle down, and then we look west to this upper low that's moving your way. Further to the east, temperatures as we head to through the day Tuesday, warm again across the deep south uh, here into uh, parts of South Texas, 80s and 90s. Cold, though, up along the U.S.-Canadian border, highs only in the 40s. That warmth, though, as we head through the next couple of days, watch what happens. I'm just going to let this animate out. You can see that really warm bubble of air, and it pushes just ever so to the north as we head into Thursday. So now we're back up into the 60s and 70s across Minnesota parts of North Dakota, even South Dakota, well into the 80s in some areas, but the cool air starts to rush in as we head into the weekend. And it could be a significant cool down 
for a lot of areas as we head into next week, especially up around the Great Lakes compared to maybe where we are now with 70s and 80s. Precipitation across the central U.S., then we'll look east, moving up through Texas into Oklahoma, that rain lifting north as we head into Tuesday into parts of Kansas, Nebraska, further north into Minnesota once we get into Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. And then as the moisture moves east through uh, Wisconsin into Michigan, it really starts to fall apart and lose a lot of the organization here. Not a lot of lift happening, so you, you lose the precipitation. And then as we head now into Wednesday, that upper low is starting to kick showers and storms out ahead of it here into parts of Wyoming along the Front Range. Some of these could be on the strong side, something to keep an eye on this week. Further to the east, let's look at this precipitation here now with a bit of a different view because we do have this low that's continuing to bring a lot of onshore flow across the northeast. Coastal flooding a problem. That low finally starts to move away as we head toward Wednesday and Thursday. And now here comes your surprise. High pressure building in, bringing in some cooler air in from the north. And look how that cool air moves, I mean, almost right down from the north here into parts of Maine. I'll tell you what's interesting. This is the GFS Go back to the uh, the shorter range model here, and I don't know that I believe this completely, and I'm going to zoom in here to the northeast because look at that, guys. This is the RRFS model, okay? Trying to show some snow into the highest elevations here into parts of Maine. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. Either way, you can tell it's going to be definitely cold underneath this upper low. That spins away, though, as we head toward the weekend. And then we're watching our next cold front, which starts to move east. That'll bring more showers. Not a lot of rain, though, uh, further to the uh, to the east in the parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. If this low can get cranking, which it tries to do right here, it could bring a little bit heavier rain than what uh, maybe the most recent fronts have brought here to parts of Michigan and to parts of southern Ontario. Here's a look at your temperatures. Again, this is heading into Friday morning. A huge difference in temperatures. Let's back you up and show you where we're headed as we head into Tuesday. Temperatures mild. I mean, even into the Northeast, we're talking about highs in the 50s and 60s, even with the clouds. It could be a lot colder this time of year. Not bad across the South either. Very comfortable 60s and uh, really 70s, though, once you get outside of the mountains here in the Appalachians and a lot of 70s and 80s the further south you go. Heading into Wednesday, temperatures warming up across Missouri, back up into the 80s. Cooling down, though, in the Northeast. Look at that chilly air pushing in from the north. High temperatures as we head now into Thursday, barely getting out of the 40s. Some of the mountains may be stuck in the 30s. Hot still across the south, also across the upper Midwest. There comes that cool air working in from the north. Temperatures chilly heading into Saturday too. So a huge difference right here along the east coast as that warm air squeezes north ahead of our cold, next uh, cold front. If you're getting excited about winter, a weekly winter weather outlook comes out here on the channel. If you missed this week's, here's a link to it. It'll also be in the description below. Check it out. We're going to talk about what I think we can expect this winter based on some of the big global features. See you there.